Bonding of the period 3 oxides. So we'll start with the formula and the name of the oxide. Na2O is uh, sodium oxide. MgO is magnesium oxide. Al2O3 is aluminium oxide. SiO2 is silicon dioxide. P4O10 is phosphorus pentoxide. P4O6 is phosphorus trioxide. SO3 is sulfur trioxide. SO2 is sulfur dioxide. And finally, we have Cl2O7, which is dichlorine heptoxide, and then Cl2O, which is dichlorine monoxide. Next, we have the oxidation number. So for sodium, it's plus one, magnesium plus two, aluminium plus three, silicon plus four. In P4O10, the phosphorus is plus five. In P4O6, the phosphorus is plus three. In SOO3, the sulfur is plus six. In SO2, the sulfur is plus four. And then Cl2O7, the chlorine is plus 7. And Cl2O, the chlorine is plus 1. So next we look at the structure and the electrical conductivity in the molten state. Sodium oxide, magnesium oxide and aluminium oxide have a giant ionic structure. So they have ionic bonds between the metal and the oxygen. So because they have ionic bonds... They are solid at under normal conditions because there's strong forces of attraction between the oppositely charged ions. When they are molten or melted, they have free moving ions. If they have free moving ions, that makes them good electrical conductors. So the electrical conductivity in the molten state is high for sodium oxide, magnesium oxide and aluminium oxide. So moving on to silicon dioxide, it has a giant covalent structure, very low or no electrical conductivity because it has no free moving ions in the molten state. The same is true for the remaining oxides. They have a molecular covalent structure. So when they're molten, they have no free moving ions. So they are poor conductors of electricity. And finally, their physical states. Well, P4O10 and P4O6, they are solids under normal conditions. That's because they're quite large molecules. They have a high molecular mass. And if substances have high molecular masses, they have strong intermolecular forces, which makes them solids under normal conditions. Moving on to the oxides of sulfur. Sulfur trioxide is a liquid. So it has a higher molecular mass than sodium di uh, sorry, sulfur dioxide, which is a gas. So because it has a higher molecular mass, it has stronger intermolecular forces. So it's a liquid under normal conditions. Sulfur dioxide has weak intermolecular forces, so it's a gas. And finally, the same is true for uh, Cl2O7. It has a higher molecular mass, so stronger intermolecular forces, so it's a liquid under standard conditions. Whereas Cl2O, it has weaker intermolecular forces, so it's a gas under normal conditions, standard conditions. Next, we look at the bonding of the period three chlorides. So we have the formula of the chloride, and I'll tell you the name. We start with NaCl, which is sodium chloride, then MgCl2, magnesium chloride. We have AlCl3, aluminium chloride, SiCl4, which is silicon tetrachloride, PCl5, which is phosphorus pentachloride, PCl3, which is phosphorus trichloride, S2Cl2, which is disulfur dichloride. And finally, we have Cl2, which is chlorine. So next is the oxidation number. So similar to the period three oxides, we have plus one for the sodium, plus two for the magnesium, plus three for the aluminium, plus four for the silicon. PCl5, the phosphorus is plus five. PCl3, the phosphorus is plus three. S2Cl2, the sulfur is plus one, and because it's an element, Cl2 has an oxidation number of zero. Next, we look at electrical conductivity in the molten state. Sodium chloride and magnesium chloride, they are giant ionic structures. So in the molten state, they have free moving ions. So they have high electrical conductivity. The remaining chlorides are molecular covalent structures. They don't have free moving ions, so they are not good electrical conductors. 
So here we have the structure of Al2Cl6. It's known as a dimer, which is two molecules joined together, and it has dative covalent bonds between the chlorine and aluminium atoms. These are shown by these arrows here.